Welcome back to Fyodor, I'm KonKon, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to beat this new map in Ark Survival Evolved. Fyodor is a very interesting map. It consists of four realms. The first and biggest is Midgard, which has multiple large islands and is the main map that you start on. But if you go to the portal cave at this location on the screen right now, you'll be able to access three other realms. If you're actually playing online, you actually have the ability to hold the R key on keyboard to teleport to these places and even Midgard itself as if the game was like Genesis. So it's pretty cool. Vanaheim is home to luscious green trees and plant life everywhere. Asgard has open plains and beautiful colored forests. And Jotunheim is just really freaking cold. All across the map, you will find red glowing runes like this on the screen right now. There are 200 of them in total to collect, hidden in all the realms and in deep caves too. If you collect 100 of them, you actually unlock an extra five levels to put into your character. And I believe if you collect all 200, you get another five levels unlocked for your character's max level, as well as being worthy to hold the mighty Mjolnir skin for a tech sword once you beat the final boss Freyner Sulfur in alpha difficulty. To preface this video, I'm only going to tell you how to beat this map and all seven bosses in it. If you'd like a more beginner introduction to learning Ark's basics, I have the perfect video linked at the top right of the screen right now to show you how to progress through all stages of the game from thatch to tech in the island map. Okay, time to spawn in. I recommend spawning in on Vardy Land North or South as you'll have a better safety and access to resources more than most other locations. Now, while I'm not going to tell you what to build, I am going to show you my best locations for each resource you will need to harvest. You can also use the Fyodor resource map linked in the description too for more locations. So let's begin with metal. I have a major amount of metal places that you can get a ton of metal like this. Like this is one of my favorites here. This is the coordinates on the GPS. And if you look at it on the map here, you can see I'm on the bottom left island of Vardyland. The second place also has a ton of metal, as you can see over here, it also has a rune. These are the coordinates on the GPS, and on the map here, you can see if I rotate, this is on Vanaland, the middle of it, right at the north side of the map there. The final metal location I have for you actually has some crystal with it as well, which is very nice, and you'll see the entire mountaintop over here has some crystal, but that's not all. So if you look at these coordinates and you see this map location over here, this is where we are on the right side of the map here of the east side of Vanaland over there. If we actually go around to the bottom here and through this little cave entrance, you'll see there's even more metal for you to collect. So that is going to be more than enough metal than you will ever need, I'm pretty sure. For silica pearls, there is a great lake over here that has a ton of them. This is the coordinates of the lake over here, and this is where you can find it on the map here. You can see it's at the bottom left map there at Vani, Vardyland, Va Vardyland, I think it's Vardyland, yeah, pretty sure. Anyway, it's you can see in the water there are silica pearls pretty much everywhere over this lake, so it's a great early game place besides the piranhas to get silica pearls. I often find myself needing a lot of cementing paste at the beginning of early game run throughs and this place over here is fantastic to get a bunch of it. There are a ton of beavers here and they make so many dams. You could probably, when you come here and you loot like six, seven dams at once, these coordinates, that location on the map here, you just look out for the beaver dams. The reason why there's none on my screen right now besides this one over here is actually just because this is a fresh new world. So everything is still spawning in here. You can see rare flowers in here too, silica pearls, as well as a ton of cementing paste. Now moving on to obsidian and crystal, you can see this is one location that has a ton of them. Very easy location to get to. There's also some metal. These are the coordinates. And on the map, this is the location where we are. As you can see over here, this is still in Vardy Land, bottom left of the map. Another good location for crystal, and also this one has some oil by it as well, which you don't have to go to the lava biome for. So this is a great place for oil, like your first little bit of oil that you can get nice and easily. These coordinates over here, it is in Vanna Land. You can see on the map at this location over here. As I rotate, you can see it's on the shore on the right side of the map over there. So come here and get some oil. Now, if we head to the shore from that location that we just came from, you'll see there's a waterfall over here. These coordinates over here, as you can tell on the map, it's little, just a little bit south of the location we were just at. And you'll see at the bottom of this waterfall, there's a, like a little entrance that goes into a cave. And you'll see inside this cave, you'll find metal nodes as well as oil and also even some crystals. So if you need any of those three resources, they're all in here. It's a great, easy place to get a ton of this. I actually don't see anything really spawning in here. I don't recall anything actually spawning in here at all. Alternatively, if you need a ton of oil, the, the best place to get oil all the time is going to be this place over here, these coordinates. It, it's at the lava section there by the Naruto cloud at the bottom right of the map. And you can find a ton of oil here by these rocks. It's just maybe a little bit of a, a dangerous trek if you land in the wrong place. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a great place to get oil. 
Now, if you're looking for giant bee honey, you just need to find beehives like this. I highly recommend you tame a dire bear first, put a saddle on it and use its kind of hand attack where it like uses its hand to smack things. It will take 15 honey from this thing without the bees chasing you, which is great. You'll find these beehives all over the world. But if you really need a ton of honey right now and you have a dire bear or a dinosaur that's strong enough, you can come to this location over here between the dam and the like frozen area. Those coordinates, this is actually Bela's cave, which is a world boss, which we'll be visiting later on again. So if you come here and you actually kill everything inside here and you bring a dire bear with its nice saddle and everything and you're able to actually harvest these things, you'll see right at the back here, the back entrance of the like Bela's cave over here, there's these beehives all over the place. And if you, if you want to get honey, this is the perfect place to get get it from there's like just so much if you're on the lookout for sulfur you can go to the volcano biome to this kind of like yellow rock section here it looks very toxic it's very hot in this area you're looking for rocks that look like this the coordinates of this place are these over here and this is where it is on the map just to give you an indication so you can come here and get sulfur if you need some now this map is fantastic for organic polymer because there is literally a whole place where Kairuku spawn and it's just this whole left top side of the map. Literally all the ice here on the top left of the map will have Kairukus everywhere. There's even a Kairuku little cave like with a shrine at these coordinates over here. I'll show you on the map now as well. Right at the top left of the map you can see over here. If you, if you get here and you find this little cave on the ice section you can actually go in here and there's just a ton of Kairuku and there's even a Kairuku statue at the end there. You can see here all you have to do is kill these things and obviously you should use the wooden club to harvest them because this is going to give you the most organic polymer for your you know your harvesting now if you need black pearls it is going to be the most intimidating challenge you have to do because this is in the fire wyvern trench here at the volcano biome at the bottom right of the map here as you can see where i am right now now what you actually have to do is go into the magmasaur cave which is over here it's the cave in the bottom of the fire wyvern trench you can actually bring like a desmodus flying at nighttime in invisible mode which is fantastic or even a maywing and you just like fling yourself through here before anything can attack you the only problem is actually getting out right you can get in here bring a shotgun or something kill the magmasaur source and you can pick up these black pearls which are all over the place here you can actually harvest these pink rocks that look like crystal for element shards as well so that's like two in one you get element shards and you get black pearls or if you're playing on a server you can hold the r key to just teleport out once you have everything you need which is a great way to stock up on resources here if you're in need of rare flowers, this is one of three locations where you can get rare flowers. I recommend bringing a Therizinosaur, which will loot these very nicely. You can see this one is located here on these cords on Vardyland, bottom left of the map, as you can see. This is a second one, looks pretty much the same as the first one, but this one is going to be on Vanaland, north of the map, these coordinates over here. This is the exact map location if you see me rotating there, the little blue guy spinning in a circle. The third location for these rare flowers is over here in another set of runes, more rare flowers and this one is just a little bit east of the previous location as you can see over here just at the like western side of the redwoods forest if you're looking to grow your own veggies and you need the crop seeds the best place to get them is actually by harvesting these like reeds that are along rivers across pretty much every river in the game you should see these reeds the one i'm at right now is over here on the map as you can see this location now when you harvest this with like a moss chops or even on a, on hand or parasaur you should get the veggie seeds and there's just tons of them even at that first rare flower like runes location you can see along the river there are so many reeds here that you can get those veggie seeds so that you can plant and get your veggie farms going now that you know where to get all the resources on, you can slowly progress through the game in order to start working on bosses. And one of the first things you need to work on is killing alpha dinos. The reason you want to do this is because when you kill an alpha dino, you will receive a new item called runestones, and you get more of them depending on how much higher the level the alpha is. As you can see over here in my inventory, these are runestones. You actually need 30 of each of these. You need 30 runestones to start each of the world boss fights, which we're going to talk about now. Now what you're about to see for Bela, Hatian Skull, and Steinborn are actually videos I've already posted individually, but since we're covering everything, I did want to place them in here, so I'm just going to show those entire videos in here in sequence. So use the timestamps in the description down below or on the screen for the chapters to navigate to where you need to be. Welcome back to Fjordor, everybody. Today we're doing the Bela boss fight. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to beat Bela, the flying bee boss. But first, let's show you where Bela is located. So at these coordinates on the map is the entrance to the cave. It's right by my middle finger on the map here, right at the top of the map in the middle. At this cave over here, you'll see the cave entrances over there. You'll see the dam on the left of it and then the ice biome on the right. So right in the middle over here, you'll find the cave right here. Obviously, all you have to do is go into the cave 
and you'll find yourself at the world boss terminal. Of course, you need 30 rune stones in order to start this fight. In terms of what dinos I recommend, I recommend bringing megatheriums because when they kill the insects, they get the, the buff that makes them hit like four or five times harder, which is fantastic for the bee boss. And shadow mains also work really well in here. You can bring a UT Rhinus to support them with extra defense and attack, or even a Deodon to heal them if your dinos don't have a lot of health. In this video, we're using just the megatheriums, but I've also used megatheriums and shadow mains at the same time too. Now, Bela is probably one of the easiest bosses to do of the world bosses or all the bosses in general on the server. So all you just need to do is attack it in this cave. It's a very small cave, so you bringing bigger dinos is going to be a nightmare. So like having Rexes and something would be insane. I did try this with like 20 Shadow Mains and 20 Megatheriums, and it was just it was just insane. There was just too much. So I recommend just bringing like 20 Tames that can target it. You do need to be careful of one thing. Bela does get to a point when it gets to low health, around like 40% HP or something. Don't quote me on that it will start to spit out poison. And if this hits you on your character directly, you will take damage on your actual character. You won't be poisoned, however, at least I haven't experienced poison, but I did take damage. So make sure you do bring some maid bruise or something to heal up if you do get hit by the poison. Once you get to the final 10% of the boss, the boss kind of just like sits there on the ground and just takes a beating for no, no apparent reason. So it gets really easy once you get to that point. As for the drops from Baylor, you will get 30 element as well as the Baylor relic and some crafted um, items or blueprints depending on your, your luck and randomness of the server. I'd like to drop a shout out to King Lion RSA for helping me with this fight in the server that we play on in the description down below if you do want to join the server. It is a PvE server located in South Africa and I hope this video helped you and thank you so much for watching. Welcome back to Ark Fjorder, guys. Today we're going to be doing the Hati and Skull fight. I'm going to give you information on how you need to beat them. Let's start out with where they're located. So this fight will take place in Asgard. So from the Asgard terminal, the one with the giant red rune in the sky, at these coordinates over here, you're going to turn around from the terminal. You're going to look where this horse is facing and you're going to jump off. You'll see the waterfall of the northern side of the map is on the left side there. And as you cross to this mountain over here, you'll see the tribute station is right over here. If you need the cords, these are the cords right now on the screen. Now, since this fight is outdoor, I highly recommend clearing out all the trees and the rocks. A May Wing is perfect for this, just so that none of your tames and anything, anything get like stuck in things around. Also recommend killing anything that is dangerous in the area that might interfere with the fight. As for what type of dinos I recommend bringing to this fight, I recommend Shadow Mains, T-Rexes, Giganotosaurus, if you have those, will be fantastic here, it will destroy the boss. And of course, since this is an open world, you can actually bring anything you really want, but some support dinos like the Uturanus to buff your, your Shadow Mains, T-Rexes, or Giganotosauruses, as well as Deodons to maybe heal them if they're still low level, will be very easy and fine for this fight. Now, of course, to begin the fight, you have to go up to the world boss terminal. You need to put 30 rune stones, which you get from killing alpha dinos on the map. And all you have to do is press E on this and it will summon the two bosses right here in this area for you to fight. Now, of course, you need to fight Hati and Skull at the same time, but there is a difference between these two wolves. Both of them have different types of attacks and one is more deadly than the other. So let's start off by talking about Skull. Skull is the yellow wolf. The yellow wolf has a much higher devastating attack power, but it has less health. Whereas Hati has more health, but less attack power. So always focus on the yellow one first when you go into this fight as a recommendation from me. Skull has a specific attack that's called an AOE Fire Howl, where it will summon a like spirit version of itself. You'll see it like shoot across like everything in a straight line, kind of setting everything on fire. It also has a special ability that kind of changes the whole look of the screen and applies a sunburn to basically all the dinos to kind of like do a bit more damage. And it can be, you know, really devastating to a creature's health. So make sure your creatures have decent health and also try to kill these dinos, at least one of them, quick. You don't want to try to kill them at the same time. You want to kill one first. Now talking about Hati, Hati has the ability to summon Fenrir minions. Now if your dinos are strong, you're probably going to kill these minions super quickly, so it's not going to be a huge issue unless your di dinos are all targeted on just like one of the bosses and they're ignoring the Fenrirs. Then it might be a problem. The, the Hati boss also has a Moon Freeze ability, which is kind of similar to the Sunburn one, which kind of changes the whole look on your screen, makes everything dark and scary looking, and also damages your dinos. Ideally, you want to kill one of the wolves, like I said, before the other so that you don't have to deal with two of these at the same time simultaneously because it will deal a lot more damage that way. 
Now, when you kill each of the wolves, Hati will drop 15 element as well as a Hati relic and some like, you know, maybe a blueprint and, or some like, you know, fancy items. Skull will drop 15 element as well, as well as the skull relic. And it will also drop like blueprints and probably some crafted or like special items of higher quality too. For the first time I did this fight, I actually brought 40 dinos and we absolutely shredded them. However, you can bring as many as you need just to defeat these bosses. If you're confident in your dinos abilities, you can bring less. If you want to bring more, you can bring more. Just keep in mind there are AoE damaging attacks from these bosses that will damage everything in that area too. Before I go, I wanna give a huge shout out to King Lion RSA for helping me with this fight over here. You can see we both basically managed these two armies and we did this fight multiple times and it came out really successful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Good luck with the fight. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to beat Steinborn, the world boss on Fyodor, but to get there first, we need to go to Jotunheim, the coldest place not on earth. So first things first, make your way to Jotunheim. You can either use the portal room at these coordinates that you saw on the screen, or you can spawn at Jotunheim by holding the R key and going to the Southwest region. So when you get to Jotunheim, it's gonna be freezing. So before you actually come here, just follow the directions here. I'm gonna show you to where the boss chamber is or the boss terminal. So facing this terminal, we're gonna to look to the right here and we're gonna go up like this just to give you a kind of an overview of where we're going. You'll see what looks like giant rib bones on the left. The closest one to you where it hits the ground, you're gonna go down the cliff at that angle over there. And right at the bottom of those kind of ribs, you'll see there's this water pool here and there's a little cave over here that's very hard to see if you're not really looking for it. It's at these coordinates. If you you do have a GPS or something to track cords and you're basically going to go into this cave right to the terminal at the very end. Now you should know that it is minus 42 degrees Celsius in this cave. It is freezing. You can have fur armor. You will still be cold. Your health will be draining the entire time. You can even try taking a Freya curry to kind of warm you up as much as you can. Now, before I talk about the best method, what I do recommend coming here with is medical brews. You need medical brews. You need a bunch of them because you need to take one every few seconds to keep yourself alive if you don't have this next thing. So the absolute best thing that you can have here to actually avoid the cold entirely is by drinking wyvern milk. To get rid of that ice cube at the bottom of your screen, wyvern milk will do the job, but it will only do the job for three minutes. It only lasts for three minutes. You do have to tranquilize a female wyvern and take the milk off the body. Otherwise, you can bring a diary that you can ride in the background to stay warm or have an otter shoulder pet. Now, to start the fight, you just go up to the terminal and you put in 30 rune stones and you just hit summon and this will summon the, the boss for you to fight. Now, Steinborn is a heavily armored bear, much like a rock golem, except he has 300,000 HP. So the best dino to actually fight him with is Gigas. Bring a Giga that is rideable with a decent saddle, imprinted if you can, and you should be able to chomp through this boss in no time. Now, the reason why you use Gigas is because if you use Shadow Mains, you will actually do almost no damage. We, we sat here for like 15 to 20 minutes with decent Shadow Mains, and it, it just, it was so slow. Even Deinonychus doesn't bleed this thing here. So we actually had to bring the Giga Notosauruses. Now you'll see I also mentioned the UT Rhinus as a support dino and the Deodon. Obviously the UT is to buff the defense and the attack power of the, the dinos that you're courage roaring. And the Deodon is just to heal them in case your dinos don't have a very high HP pool and you're trying to push this fight. Though this fight is intensely difficult and you constantly need to watch the health on your character the entire time. Because if you don't have Wyvern Milk, you can also cheese it by just taking medical brews to outheal the cold. Like what I was doing over here the entire time. Now the strategy for the boss is just to nuke it down, just attack it directly. It will basically summon like a like icicles and rocks around it every now and again, doing an AOE damage. It will also summon rubble bears around it, as you can see here on the floor that immediately got destroyed, which are no like real threat, which are just kind of like additions or adds to the, the fight. Ultimately, all you have to do is just beat the boss with its heavy resistance armor. And if you have gigas, it's it's a joke. It's a complete joke to do this fight. As for the drops from the boss, you will get a bunch of different things like, you know, blueprints, items, you'll get 30 element, and you will also receive the Steinborn Relic, which you will be using to fight the Megapithecus boss. I hope you guys found this video helpful, and thank you so much for watching. Each of those three world bosses should drop a relic item of their kind, like the Bela Relic, Hati Relic, Skull Relic, and Steinborn Relic. And these are used as tribute to fight three of the next main bosses on the map, the Broodmother, the Megapithecus, and the Dragon. These bosses will unlock tech engrams for you, as well as give you element and some other drops.
Let's start with the Broodmother and what you need for the fight. So firstly, you'll need the Bela Relic, the artifacts of the Clever, Hunter, and Massive, as well as Argentavis Talons, Sarkasucha Skins, Sauropod Vertebrae, and Titanoboa Venom. Here's how much you'll need for each difficulty in Gamma, in Beta, and finally for the Alpha boss version fights. This cave right here is where you're going to be getting the artifact of the Clever and the pack at these coordinates over here, 2157, on the map at this location over here. This is what the cave entrance looks like, and for this cave you'll need grapple hooks, parachutes, med brews, a megatherium, shadowmane, or thylacolio just to get through. It's a hot cave, so be prepared for the heat. Also bring a cryopod for your dino of choice, and here's how you'll find the artifact through this cave. You'll see the first part here has some parkour that you need to do with the lava, or you can bring a crossbow with the grapple hooks like I mentioned with parachutes and just kind of pull yourself across this entire kind of little tunnel. When you get to the end over here, which actually makes a bit of a jump over to a new section, you'll see there's some dinos, insects, and the onyx that will be attacking you. You want to get on a megatherium or whatever your dino of choice is to attack them, bring a gun or a weapon as well to deal with them. If you do get poisoned, this is why you have the medbrews. Now you'll see as you run here, this lava dripping down here. Behind there, there is an artifact down that location, and there's also an artifact to the right. So if I quickly go here, just pretend we went across here with the megatherium, you'll see the first artifact is located in the middle of this room over here. You can see you can get there through two paths, or actually three of them, and you can just get the artifact right over here. Now returning to the Megatherium, if you actually continue along to the path to the right and you just follow it along like this, you'll see this one will eventually lead you directly to the next artifact as well. So this is a nice cave that has two of them, isn't relatively difficult, the only thing you just need to be aware of is not getting poisoned or not falling into the lava, and if you have med brews and you're just careful, you should be fine. Here's how to get the artifact of the hunter. So at 0333 on the map at this location over here, this is what the cave entrance looks like. And for this cave, you will need grapple hooks, parachutes, a pistol or shotgun maybe, med brews definitely, a megatherium, shadowmane, or thylacoli, or any dino that you can use to fight here. You can also even use a maywing if you have the skill to fly through this cave over here. There will be a rock blocking the entrance. It is quite cold as well, and you need to be aware that there are perlovia in this area usually that spawn, and they will dismount you for 10 seconds, and that can be quite deadly. But however, getting to the artifact is super simple. You just go down the little chasm here. It drops into like a little bit of water here. There's some sarcosuchuses in here if you need more of those skins. And then just get up over here to pick up the artifact of the hunter, and that's how you get it. Here's how to get the artifact of the massive. So at 7101 on your map, you'll see at this location over here, here's what it looks like on the map as well. The cave entrance is in the water just below us, so you can use a shadow main or a maywing to quickly swim up into the air bubble. You don't need uh, like a scuba tank or anything, you should be fine. So use a shadow main or something, and for this cave, you'll need grapple hooks, parachutes, a pistol or shotgun or weapon to deal with some Desmodus. There will also be some onyx in this cave, so maybe bring some med brews just to heal. You can see the path that we're taking right now leads directly to the air bubble, so we don't even go down in our oxygen, which is fine. Now, when you get into this first chamber, all you're going to do is use the shadow main or your grapple hooks to basically get to the top over here, and this will lead into the cave from this. I think there might even be a second entrance to this cave. I actually just don't know where it is, but if you if you know the chords for it, share it down in the, the comments below. But this is how you actually get up into here, and when you get up into this section, this is where there's going to be inside sex and everything, so have your Shadow Main or Megatherium ready to do some battle over here. The biggest thing you need to be careful of is before you go into this big chamber up ahead here, there will be Desmodus flying around or like attached to the ceiling. And if they manage to pick you up, they're just going to pick you up and drop you in like spiders, Arthropleura, Titanoboa, just everything. So make sure you try kill them in the this little, 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 little hallway here instead of them dragging you out into the big chamber. Alternatively, you just get on a shadow main and you just yoink yourself. You just get on the fastest thing to kind of outrun the Desmodus by using the jumps or anything just to run to the back door, which is literally on the opposite side that you came in from. So if you, you just run straight there, it's, you can't really get lost. You'll see there's a door over here. And at this point, you're going to be going on foot because there's nothing dangerous up ahead besides traps. And now you're going to go into a little bit of a labyrinth. It's not really too crazy. You're not going to get super lost or anything. There are traps, though, that you need to be aware of. These different things are like pressure plates that shoot arrows, like trank arrows out here. So be careful of that. And you'll see these grids on the ground here, like where those skeleton skulls are. And like this the grid over here, if you actually stand on it, it's going to do a lot of damage to you with spikes. So it's very easy to die in this cave to these traps. So be very careful as you progress along. 
The whole idea is to find special colors and numbers with them to use a combination lock at the end to open up the thing. I'm going to give a spoiler right now. So if you want to do this, uh, like naturally do it without watching this. Like, just skip ahead to the next artifact. Now, if you wanted the combination spoiled and you want me to just help you easily out of this, all you have to do is go to this room over here that the first one that you see, you're going to be pressing the green. Then you're going to be pressing yellow. And then you're going to be pressing purple. And then you're going to be pressing blue finally, and this will open up the door. So this is the combination lock to open up this first door. You should be warned that the door is going to slam shut after a few seconds and you will not be able to return that way. So <laughs> yeah, have fun. Now this chamber is very deadly and you got to be careful of these spikes on the ground. You're looking for four or more numbers. I'm going to give you the spoiled numbers, the combination. So all you have to do is get to the chamber with all the buttons and we'll sort it out for you. So when you get to this pillar with the heads on it, with all the different colors, you're going to click green and then you're going to click purple, which is on the opposite side. Then you're going to hit yellow, which is just to the left of this. And then you're going to go to blue, which is the final one. So you can see yellow and purple have just swapped the order from that what they were in the first combination. And then this door will open up over here. Now, as always, this door is going to slam shut the moment, like after a few seconds go by. So pick up this rune and go pick up that artifact and quickly get out of this room if you want to not be trapped in here. Alternatively, you can just hold the R key and you can just teleport out naturally to wherever you want it to go to. And that's how you get the artifact. Now that you have all the tribute to start the Broodmother boss fight, you can go to 5865 on your map at this location. The entrance will be next to a waterfall hidden behind these trees over here. It's very hard to find. Inside this cave, there will be some insects that you need to kill. So bring a dinosaur that can deal with that. And you'll also find the boss terminal towards the back of the, the, like, the whole cave. And you can only take 20 dinos into this boss fight. So what I recommend is actually one Uteranus, 19 strong Rexes, or even Megatheriums with good saddles for all of them to easily beat the boss. You use the Uteranus to Courage Raw to apply its buff to the dinos for the fights so that they increase their chances of success. It's pretty much the same as the Broodmother you fought on the other maps just shown in this one over here. These are the drops for beating this boss in each difficulty. And these are the tech engrams you unlock for each difficulty of beating this boss as well. Moving on to the easiest boss to beast, the Megapithecus. It has really low health and deals a lot of damage though. If your dinos are good, this fight will be very smooth. The tribute you need to start this fight will be the following. The Steinborn Relic, the artifact of the Brute, Devourer, and Pack. For the dinosaur tribute items, you're going to need Megalania Toxin, Megalodon Teeth, Spinosaurus Sails, Therizino Claws, and Thylacolio Claws. And this is how many you're going to need for each difficulty of the boss in Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. Here's how to get the artifact of the brutes. So at 5014 on the map, this location over here, this is what the cave entrance looks like. For this cave, you're going to need a few gas masks in case yours break. You're going to need a grapple hook, definitely, parachutes, a pistol or shotgun or some weapon, med brews in case you get poisoned by onyx, and then a megatherium, shadowmane, or thylacolio to kill anything through here. Now, this is a poisonous insect cave, so you're going to die if you don't go in here without a gas mask because you're just going to take poison damage. And there's a ton of insects here, so you can bring your megatherium to just farm that chitin and, and just get tons of it, right? So as you go into this cave here, you're going to have to deal with... Um, the freaking Desmodus right at the first opening of the big chamber over here. So at this opening here, there's going to be Desmodus flying around. You're going to have to use your guns to try kill them so that they don't just you know, yoink you off the entire time and ruin your whole day. So make sure you go ahead and kill all of those using your weapons. And then you can continue progressing down here. You're going to take the left path as you get to the major kind of like swampy area. And this is going to go down like this whole long ass pathway for you to kill things along the way, which is going to be great for getting chitin. You should get to this area over here with a gate up ahead with a room turn to the right and you'll see there's like some stuff here of like a big tree in the middle you're going to use a grapple hook to get here but there's going to be onyx flying around so you want to kill those first but use your grapple hook to get onto this platform here just below the giant flower and you'll see that the artifact is located just in the middle of the stones over here and that's how you get the artifact of the brute this is how to get the artifact of the Devourer. So at 0303 on the map for this location over here, this is what the cave entrance looks like. It's basically around the snow area over here. What you're actually going to need here is a scuba tank because this is a cold underwater place. You're going to need a Basiliosaurus or a Risky Shadow Mane, which you can use. I recommend the Basiliosaurus because you can at least fight off the jellyfish without being dismounted. You're basically looking for this cave entrance at the bottom of the water over here. There's going to be Alpha Megalodons and Electric Eels and Jellyfish and 
everything that you hate in this cave. So that's why you need the best of the source to either fight them or you can actually do what my friend uh, King Lion does is just go on a shadow main and just literally rush to the end so fast that nothing can keep up. And if you get here and nothing's following you, then you've done it correctly and you can get into this little pit and find the artifact of the Devourer and then just use the teleport to, to get out. Or if you came in here with a best of the source like me, you can just kill everything on the way out. So yeah, that's how you get it. Now, since we also need the artifact of the pack, you can also see we already got the artifact of the pack from when we did that cave that had both Clever and pack in it earlier. If you missed that, go to 20 minutes, one second in this video to see how to get that artifact again. Now that you have all the tribute for the Megapithecus boss fight, you can go to 58, 85 on your map at this location right over here. It's Aberration Cave. The air is fine though. You can breathe just fine in here. You will need to find something to kill these dinos back in here. So bring like a Shadow Main or a, a Rex or something. You can fit that in here. So just kill the Ravagers and things that are going to try kill you like the Aberrant Spinos in here as well and the Carcanos Crabs towards the very end of the cave. Once you do get to the very end of the cave, you will find the boss terminal. Now much like any other Megapithecus boss on other maps, this is all about killing it faster than it can kill you which is usually easy if you have good dinos. So I recommend one UT Rhinus and 19 Rexes with good saddles and you should be able to easily beat this fight. You just use the UT Rhinus to courage roll the Rexes as they fight the boss. Now these are the drops for defeating the boss in each difficulty as well as the tech engrams you will unlock too for beating the boss in all its difficulties. And finally, the dragon boss is next, but it's not the last boss. The tribute you will need for the dragon boss is going to include the following. The Hati Relic, the Skull Relic, the artifacts of the Cunning, Immune, Skylord, Strong, and the Dino tribute is going to be Allosaurus Brains, Basiliosaurus Blubbers, Utyrannus Lungs, Rex Arms, Tuthosus Tentacles, which is the Octopus, the Giganotosaurus Hearts, and this is how many of each item you're going to need for each difficulty of the fight in Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. Here's how to get the Artifact of the Cunning. At 77, 64 on the map, at this location over here, you're going to be facing towards the east to so see the entrance of the cave. The cave is underwater. You will need a scuba tank. You will need Medbrews, a Basiliosaurus, plus a Megatherium, Shadowmane, or a Thylacolia to get through towards the end. So it starts out of a, as a water cave over here, and you'll see as we swim into this cave, it will progress into like a, a land kind of version. So you're going to go in here. Right now, there's nothing in, in single player because the dinos haven't spawned in. There should be sharks and stuff here. You're you're going to swim directly down into this room and then you're going to swim straight across over here and you should be able to go up into an open area and this is where you're going to be bringing out your next thing to fight. There will be insects in this cave so you'll be able to fight those and get a bunch of kites in if you need that which is not the greatest place to get kites in. There's a really cool chamber over here but we're going to continue along straight through this like obsidian looking cool path over here. It's really decorated. This is one of the nicest looking artifact caves I've ever been in. You're going down this pathway over here with a scary ass jump. If you fall in there you take a million damage so be very careful and basically if you've made it down here there might be some insects over here there's actually supposed to be some that spawn here right now I got lucky and there's nothing and you'll see the artifact is going to spawn in the middle of this room it's, it's super decorated and crazy I actually really like this one it's actually really nice to get and that's how you actually get the artifact of the cunning Here's how to get the artifact of the immune. So at 91, 78 on the map at this location over here, this is what the cave entrance looks like. This is where it is on the volcano biome. For this cave, you're going to need med brews in case you get like, you know, poisoned by the onyx in this cave. There's also Desmodus, so be very careful about that. Bring a strong Rex, Megatherium, Shadowmane, Thylacolio, anything you're, you're, you like, like using to fight in here, you should be fine. All you have to do to get the artifact is literally just run in a straight line until you you see it which is fantastic and you can just pick it up here and that's how you get the artifact of the immune here's how you can get the artifact of the skylord so it's 0925 on the map at this location over here this is what the cave entrance looks like now for this cave you're going to need grapple hooks parachutes med brews shotgun or another strong gun a rex or shadow main or something really strong like a thylacolio that's very beefed up basically what you do is get to this cave over here you can see it's basically in this little small empty ice cave looks empty but there is a small little entrance through the back over here that you're going to be running through and you're going to immediately throw out your wrecks and stuff to deal with strong dire bears and enemies across here. So kill everything along this path that I'm taking over here. It's not going to be as lucky as my single player save that just has no things spawned in just yet. It's probably going to be packed full of heavy things 
and it's going to do a lot of damage. It's no joke coming in this cave. You can also take a shortcut by jumping off the right to get to this entrance because this is where you're going and you're going to swap to something smaller like the Shadow Main and you're going to be using it in here. There's going to be Onyx and like Direwolves and I think and like some stuff just around here as well. You can, you don't, you're not going to die if you fall down like this, by the way. So uh, you'll be happy to know that it's just ground and stuff. You might just get trapped in the bottom. There are Perlovias in this cave as well. So that makes it even better. Once you get to this area over here, this is right at the back of the cave by the statue. You'll see the artifact of the Sky Lord is right over there. I hate this cave. Here's how to get the artifact of the strong. So at 1084 on your map at this location over here, this is what the cave entrance looks like. For this cave, you're going to need grapple hooks, parachutes, med brews, and a megatherium to get through. It's a nice insect cave. Great to get like a ton of chitin if, you, if you're in the need of that. Pretty much every single cave in this thing is an insect cave. So chitin is not a problem on this map. So when you find this cave here with the big log over here, it's very hard to find this entrance. So I try to show you as much of the entrance as I could there. And you're just going to go in here and you're just going to fly along or well, ride along on your megatherium, killing everything along the way. If you need giant bee honey, there's also a nice location up ahead over here for a bunch of giant bee honey. Now there's two paths that, that go in here and they both lead to the same place. It can be a little bit tricky because it looks like a dead end, but right now we're just going to stick to the left. We're going to take every single left path that we can over here, and we're just going to go this way. So when you see the split, just take, stay to the, the left, and when you get into a new big open chamber here with a little waterfall in front of you, go to the right, and you'll see it will look like a dead end with all the crystals on the wall over there. It is not a dead end. You can actually grapple all the way to the top over there. And you'll see there's like a little mail slot kind of section where you can literally just slide your character through over here, much like you did on the island map. And you're just going to go through here and you're going to get to this side. I don't believe there was anything to fight here, if I recall, because on multiplayer, there was nothing in this room. This is a giant chamber where the artifact is hidden and nothing bad spawns in here, I think, because every time I played it, there was just nothing bad in here. It was kind of cool. It was just like, it was like everything was behind on the other sides and here was just clean. There was nothing. All you got to do is run up to the artifact like this and go pick it up and you're good to go. That's how you get the artifact of the strong. Now that you have all the tribute for the dragon boss, you can go to this location on the map at 8604, which is a shortcut to the Dragon Boss Terminal, by the way. You can also take the main entrance at 8321 if you want to explore. Uh, for the Dragon Fight, much like any of the other Dragon Fights, you can use one Ysiranus, 19 Therizinosaurus, or pretty much a lot of other strategies that are at play. You can use Deinonychus as well, you know, like attacking the feet of the dragon when it's landed. Just make sure, sure not to get bit by it on, I mean, with its fire. There's also a strategy that me and my tribe are going to try where we use Andrew Sarkis and we actually just like, you know, use the Therizinos to distract it when it's on the ground and we just constantly use Andrew Sarkis to shoot at it. It's also quite important to put veggie cakes on the Therizinos because when their health goes below a certain percentage, they will eat a veggie cake in their inventory and they'll heal up a certain amount automatically, which is great, keeps them alive longer. And they also have a, they take reduced damage from fire. Well, they take less fire as herbivores, whereas carnivores take a lot more percentage-based fire from the dragon. So your theories, if you have theories that are stronger than your Rexes in terms of HP, they're going to, they're going to be really good for this fight. Ultimately, the dragon fight has been known to have many strategies like the woolly rhinos, you know, Deinonychus, anything that you want. So if you have a big tribe and stuff, you're free to try anything else you want to beat the dragon boss. Now, in terms of the drops for defeating the dragon, these are the drops that you will get in all the difficulties. And these are the tech engrams you will unlock as well for defeating the dragon in all the difficulties too. Now that you've beaten the first six bosses, ultimately the dragon, Mechapithecus, and the Broodmother, you can finally fight the ultimate boss of Fyodor, which is Fenris Sulfur. And to show you how to defeat him, I've actually made a video which I'm going to include in the running right after this clip right now. In this video, I'm going to show you how to beat the ultimate boss of Fyodor, and this is Fenris Sulfur. So let's start out with how you fight Fenris Sulphur. So to start this fight, you just need to go to any of the three obelisks or runes in this map, Fyodor. And you can see the green one is located in here, if you couldn't just see it on the map. The ice one is located over here. And the lava one is located on the lava island over here. You can also go to any of the three other realms, Asgard, Jotunheim, or Vanaheim, and start the fight from one of these terminals, like the Asgard one over here. In order to begin the fight, you need the trophies of the dragon, the Megapithecus, and the Broodmother in the difficulty of the fight that you're trying to fight it in. So Gamma needs to be Gamma, Beta needs to be Beta, and Alpha needs to be the Alpha versions of the trophies, as well as these levels as you see on the screen. Now, before you enter this arena, you should know that it's pretty cold, so you should take a Freya Curry, as well as 
does some nice med brews to heal yourself if you take any damage, and trust me, you might just take damage. Alternatively, you can just wear fur armor that's really good, or even bring wyvern milk so you don't have to worry about the cold at all for three minutes. Now, this is the temperature of the coldness. It is minus 30 degrees Celsius. It's not as cold as Jotunheim, but it's a little close to that, so just be aware of the cold, right? So I recommend taking Deinonychus in here, but I don't recommend taking only Deinonychus in here. I actually recommend taking a mix of Deinonychus and Rexes, which I'll show you towards the end of the video when I do my proper version of the fight. Now, the big reason why we have the Deinonychus is when you cap its melee off a just over 600% melee damage, don't go higher than 600%, put the rest of your points into HP, but get to as close to 600% melee damage as you can, if not just on 600 and as much HP as you can with good saddles. Now, the Deinonychus bleed works on bosses up to the 600% of their melee damage, and it does insane damage, but we need something to actually block the boss, which we'll use Rexus for later. Let's talk about the boss itself. So you can see here, it will summon Fenrir, who will attack you, as well as it will try bite you. It will also do various types of attacks like a giant like spikes thing like this that will actually yoink you into the sky. Ideally, you don't want to be in range of any of its attacks. You can see it also does a kind of like spikes and balls flying around it. It does an ice beam that will constantly laser you and does like in insane like, you know, overtime damage like a Mana Gamar. And you just want to generally not be in the face of this of this thing at all. I did try Shadow Mains and in my Shadow Mains test, I managed to get destroyed, right? Because you don't want to be close to the boss at this level here, getting thrown up like this. And the one attack you need to avoid is this one over here when it freezes everything near it and also shoots a version of itself in an ice form that actually dismounts you and drags you towards the boss and then lasers you to death. So yeah, you don't want to be close to this boss at all. If it gets near you, it's probably game over. So the main army that I decided to use here was 10 Danonicus, 9 Tech Rexes, all with health and melee leveled up. Obviously, the Danonicus don't go more than 600% melee. And then you're going to use the Comma if you're playing on keyboard to kind of guide your army ahead of you. Obviously, do the Courage Roll buff on them before they end up engaging with the boss. I actually did start it a little bit later here. Now, what you're going to see is me using the Comma key to guide my army in front of me over here. And you can see here the spikes then spawn over there. We're going to do the Courage Roll to get everything buffed up so that they can engage with the fight. We're also going to put them on aggressive by hitting the Minus key on your... Um, um, numpad if you're playing on keyboard you need to find out these controls if you aren't you want them kind of to be in aggressive so that they focus down the Fenrir as well as the boss luckily we avoided that ice kind of version of itself because if you get hit by that that's usually at least someone in your tribe is going to die you'll see that that also freezes the rexes but the nice thing about the rexes here it actually keeps the boss from getting towards us so the Danonicus can find it the, the rexes will block it and keep it like trapped in a, in a in a sense there so it cannot actually get towards us and it's just going to get melted down like this and we just just have to just stay our distance, keep courage rowing, and this fight will be super easy. I also recommend doing the same thing for Alpha. Just obviously have mutated dinos for your Tech Rexes as well as your Danonicus, and you should be fine. These are the HP values that my dinos went down. They have decent saddles, really decent saddles, but this is just spawned in, so keep that in mind. Also, this is this Danonicus's second fight, so that HP has been in two fights without being healed up the second time, so they didn't take that much HP damage. For beating the boss, you will get Element at these levels for Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. You'll also get a Cryopotted Fenrir, a 150 level for Gamma, 190 for Beta, and a 225 for Alpha, a Fenrir Sulfur Flag, a Fenrir Sulfur Trophy, as well as the Tech Sword Engram Unlock. And also, if you beat it on Alpha, you will get the Mjolnir skin, which you can put on the Tech Sword to use the Mjolnir, as long as you're level 190 and also have collected all 200 runes on the map. So good luck with that. And that's that. I hope you guys found this video helpful, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys around for the next one.